Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Okay, let's start off right off the bat by your host, Bruce Broussard and Teresa Dupay. We're the host today. And we and I read right up front with you. It was so it's so it was such a busy week that you really need some support. I mean, it, it was a busy, busy week. And forget the national perspective. I'm talking about here in the Portland metropolitan yeah. area, in the state of Oregon. And really, that's where we are. Oregon Voters Digest, and that's what we're bringing to you, the crowd out there. And so we're gonna we're gonna spend some time here in the, the largest city in the state of Oregon. That's Portland, Oregon. It's pretty well. That's probably the lead, folks, if you will, as far as we're concerned, politically or whatever. And there were two major issues uh, that that uh, hit the table. One was the selection of the police department chief of police by our mayor here in Portland, Ted Wheeler, and hey, Ted Wheeler. <laughs> you guys come around, so they all look alike to me. <laughs> I hate to put it that way. I got it. Sorry, I didn't hit no, that too hard. That. You, didn't, you didn't get that one, did you? And then we had our, and then we had our superintendent of schools, mm -hmm. Portland Public Schools. Uh, we got a Latino, a Hispanic coming on who's going to be the, the superintendent of school. Well, I tell you, it's going to be very interesting, yeah? I mean, you know, that, that, what, whatever comes to mind, I won't say that, Don. You told me about that, but about, uh, about the, the, the safe city type thing. What was that thing? What was, what was the name of that? That group that we're talking about? We'll talk know. about that. ICE? No, no, no. no. <laughs> Sanctuary City. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> but that's another issue that we're going to be talking about at one point in time. But I want you to recognize the fact that Teresa has been an asset here on the Oregon Voters Digest. Uh, that's why I said she's co-hosting the day because you with, the, with these strange characters, me and <laughs> with me and, and then JD and, 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 and Don, it's going to be very interesting. But anyway, it's a little funding deal on the side. But anyway, there were some serious things, but sometimes... If we really want to get down to the solution of the matter, you have to be a little funzy about it, aspect of it, and not get so serious that it can't be resolved. We need solutions. And we, we, we made some pretty major solutions with the ch chairman of the board. And Don's got the solution big time. He, he's going to remind me of Stan Peters. I won't, so I won't tell you what Stan used to do in front of city council. But anyway, but th that's another story aspect of it. But what we're going to do, like I said, the first the first uh, half hour, we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about police work. we got our... Our local policeman here, on and my chief of police when I was running for mayor during the time he was he was the mayor. I was the mayor. And I, I was a chief. In fact, we were both. He was a chief mayor, and I was a uh, chief mayor. We we ran we ran this city, right, Don? I think so. Yeah. Okay, sounds <laughs> sounds great to me. I'm trying remember, to remember what happened. There you go. <laughs> and then now he's such a scholar now. You know, yeah, I can't even talk yeah, to him anymore. Yeah, he's got his degree in this, that, and the other. Yeah, Beforehand, he could talk to me, you know, and we could talk and this, that, and the other. Now I've got to sit there and listen to what he has to say. He said, Bruce, so oh, here in the back over here somewhere, I'll tell you what's going on, you see. But anyway, I, but anyway, he's always a pleasure. In fact, he's been an asset uh, since on the show since. That's why we have him on so much because if you want to talk about police work here in, in the city of Portland, it's Don. Don was there. He was there. He's, he's got the history. He's got that background. So again, welcome, buddy. Thank you, sir. Always a pleasure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And then we've got within our present J.D. Chandler. Hi. Yeah, J.D. Uh, again, uh, I met him through. Guess who? <laughs> we interviewed him. Guess who? Where? Mm -hmm. Right here on Oregon Voters Digest. And again, another history buff, big time. Yes. Uh, one from the standpoint of police, but other things too, civil rights issues and things of that nature. He's an excellent writer aspect of it, and boy, he's just an asset. Because when you start thinking about history and background and, and whatever, Oregon Voters Digest, that's what we are. And it's kind of neat to have a, a person like J.D. on, and hopefully he's going to be here. He's going to have a lot of face time because, <laughs> because again, too, you know, not, we, we need to do that. And we want to make sure that you, you welcome home here now and appreciate that very much. And Glad to be here. Appreciate that very much, J.D. And then naturally, my old sidekick here, my right buddy, the whole nine <laughs> yard, is Teresa. I mean, I, couldn't, I wouldn't know what to do without her. My <laughs> one I mean, she's, she's very assertive and, and this, that, and the other. She'll say her mind. And, and I finally figured out what Facebook was all about. <laughs> and then, you know, just, Bruce, do your thing. And I, <laughs> now I understand what Facebook is. I do more posting than I do writing. <laughs> Because I like those ideas. Don likes that too. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm sending it to Don on them posting. He likes those, those, those posting things. You know what I'm saying, and I don't have to research anything. They're right there for you. Bang! You know, you throw them out and get another one. Mm -hmm. Really good deal. But again, Teresa has been a value to the show, and I'm spending this much time at this point in time because we got a lot of work to do, folks. 
And uh, we're going to be spending a lot of time on this stuff here. And I, there's, there's one say, no person is an island. And that's what I'm sharing, if you will. And, and so uh, you may sit me in this chair, but you're going to be seeing any, any one of these guys are sitting at the chair. And Teresa going to be on that end of it. But, uh, again, well, I want to thank all of you. Yeah, right, right. And I want to thank you, the viewing audience, you know, that, that you're out there here now. And, and uh, it's very important that you understand what we're doing. It's very important that you, you get the information. Because we don't read the papers. Now that we've got this smartphone piece, everybody's, but it's a start. I mean, start getting on a personal standpoint, but now you'll be able to get, understand what's going on around you. And that's going to be very, very important because our world has gotten very, very more sophisticated than ever. I mean, you, you hear this still, this situation up in, uh, in Carolina right now, this whole issue aspect of it. In Virginia. In Virginia. Yeah. That's, that is an issue. But again, too, let's put it this way. Is the Civil War. If we had that history, if we were talking about that history back when, when Lincoln was alive, imagine if he had lived and we talked about those issues then, we wouldn't be dealing with this issue today. We, we've got a responsibility to this world for that matter yes, we do. because we're the, we're the lead. We're the lead. And uh, so, so it's very, very important. So that's, one, that's, what the, that's why I'm so important and why, why I've, I've maintained the Oregon Voters Digest. It's a very, very important piece. It's history there. You can go and visit it. You can visit it at the Oregon Historical Society. The archives, yeah. The archives, the Oregon Historical Society. You can visit it here on the show routine. We've got an archive, if you will. <clears throat> you can just shoot it and look at the stuff and whatever. And uh, so it's a very important piece, very important, too. Now, let's get right into the show. Let's get right up into the show. Teresa, why don't you leave? Uh, we're, talking about, we're talking about police today. Well... The what chief, the new chief. The new chief, yeah. Um, give, her an, give her an introduction, and what do you think? Danielle uh, Outlaw, <laughs> um, and people are kind of divided. There are a lot of people that don't support the decision to choose her. There are a lot of people that do. Um, I think it's a step in the right direction. I think we should definitely give her a chance. Um, she's going to need to learn about Portland history, and she's going to really need to research the history of the Portland Police Bureau because she's coming in from outside and she doesn't have a clue about a lot of the history of these these guys she's going to be working with. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> JD, what do you think, man? Well, I, here we are, the history. Yeah, we exactly. Are the history. Yep. And before I say anything about Danielle Outlaw, I want to first express my solidarity with the people back in Virginia who are fighting the fascists, yeah. Heather Hires, who died. Um, yeah. It m reminds me of Selma, Alabama in 1965, when mm -hmm. people were dying fighting these same people yeah. on the same issues, yeah. and 1941, fighting the same people on the same issues. Mm -hmm. We have to remember that people have died for our civil rights, and that we can't turn our back on them. The reason we have to die for them again is because people forgot. Mm -hmm. right. So let's I not agree. forget this time. I agree. Because yeah. people are dying right now yes. for things that our ancestors have died for every generation. So that's, that's my soapbox. You know, uh, <laughs> another a point on that particular point, those people who have identified as the cause to this problem, we got to interview them. We got to get a sense of, no, no, I'm saying, where are they coming yeah. from? And then like all Joey these, Gibson? Yeah, yeah right, right. Gibson, that was yeah. A, that, my point was yeah. that I, I, yeah. let him speak. Yeah. Let them speak. And I'm saying in many ways that history had they been getting this in the, in, the, in the schools and this, that, and the other, then all of a sudden things make up. But then you got this other media aspect of it that's out there that's kept us divided, too. Well, the thing cases. that people are overlooking is the fact that when these people are held accountable for mm -hmm. their actions, mm -hmm. it's turning out, in most cases, these are mentally ill people mm -hmm. right. who've been incited to do right. what they did mm -hmm. by irresponsible people right. like our president. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I agree mm -hmm. with that. And I also think that I was posting about it this morning on Facebook. Somebody posted about what happened. And... Um, and I said, I've never met a white supremacist who, I, who, who clearly was an educated or enlightened person. Mm -hmm. Almost always they're um, uneducated, illiterate, blue collar working class. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but they're not enlightened people. And like JD said, a lot of them are just plain mentally ill mm -hmm. and suffering from paranoia. And um, uh, somebody disagreed with me and said, oh, there are a lot of white supremacists that are very educated, and, and there are, but they're a really <coughs> tiny percentage because most of them are the guys you see on television, the guys that go to the, the rallies, like the Joey Gibson rallies, you know, the, the blue-collar working class, 
have accomplished very little in their lives, and that's the one thing they can they can say, oh, I'm white, you know. Well, and the ones who are educated are very cynical about what they're doing, and they're exploiting the yeah. uneducated. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a it's that. a very cynical move that these people are doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And 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 I, feel, and I I mean it just seems so clear to me that it's because of Trumpism. It just makes me angry that we have to do this over and over yeah. and over right. because we forgot that right. people mm -hmm. died for this 50 mm -hmm. years ago. Right. Well, let's spend more time on it, but I want to make sure yeah. we, get, we get our policeman that he is on board. <laughs> he's been here for days, if you will. I know he's just, interesting. He, he just really wants to talk about this, whole issue the question. About, <laughs> about this person that he recommended to, to, uh, to our mayor to, uh, it should be the chief of police. Um, Don, what do you think I today? Um, I don't know who the other people were. Okay. Uh, nobody it, does. It, That's it, the problem. It's one of the problems. You know? I would have liked to have known. Yeah. Who who they who they had up besides this lady? We heard that Charles Moose was there. Charles Moose was uh, certainly taking another look at it. Well, uh, was somebody it? said that there was an assistant chief from Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, see, yeah. See yeah, Mark him. And then there was former Marshall, chief. Yeah, the former chief. Here. Yep. And I know that uh, at one point, uh, Mark. We, uh, we heard that Mark DeLong. DeLong Mark DeLong was right. yeah. put his hat through his hat in the, mm -hmm. in the ring. So. I don't know who we had a choice from, mm -hmm. right? But <clears throat> it's obvious that the choice that Wheeler made was was to go outside the city, and I think he picked a qualified person. There's very little doubt about that. But the problem is she's not from here. So mm -hmm. if you start from if you start from you know the trailhead, what do you do from here? You have to get to know Portland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Portland is not Oakland. Uh, that's very different. Portland yeah. is not Oakland, and you need somebody to just drive you around town and show you where the neighborhoods are and the mood of the city. And then you need to realize that uh, she's saying that she's not here to, to reorganize the police right. department, but she does need to reorganize the police department. The police department here is is in uh, dire need of reorganization. Uh, my constant criticism of them is they are too specialized. I'm a traffic cop, I'm a vice cop, I'm a, a, a gang cop, I'm an intelligence cop. What happened to policemen? So there aren't any policemen anymore. So we need to thin these ranks of specialists out and put policemen on the street. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest crimes perpetrated against policemen here in Portland was the one-man cars. One-man cars. And there's enough policemen here now I can figure out a way to put a lot more cars on the street that are two men. Mm -hmm. You know, you can take a lot of guys out of the traffic division and make two-man cars. You can take them out of internal affairs and put two-man cars. So let's have more generalists. Hey, you're a policeman. If you get a call on a robbery, you take it. If you get a call on traffic, you take it. If you get a call on a murder, you take it. And then you take it on to the detectives when it's appropriate. But still. We need more generalists, more policemen on the street. And also, the first thing I do is get rid of the black uniforms. Mm -hmm. Go back to blue. Mm. Be more soft. Mm. I'd also yeah. have, uh, I'd have a couple of volunteer officers that would be willing to go out on the street again in slacks and blazers mm -hmm. and see how they respond to the citizens. Let's get back to some community policing ideas that mm -hmm. we've Get them out of these SWAT team yeah. uniforms. Yeah. Stop looking like ninjas. Look like policemen. Look like detectives. Get back to some of the old ways. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree with that. I think they need to be humanized mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. And blazers mm -hmm. and slacks would do that um, for a certain number of them. But I think one of the most important things Don um, has said in the past is two-man cars. Mm -hmm. One-man cars, it has been proven statistically Dangerous. in criminological research that cops get into trouble and there are more deaths when a cop is by himself. Mm -hmm. We need to have two man cars, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because two people, a man or a woman, two men, whatever, they can handle uh, a person that's resisting, that's being aggressive a lot better than a single cop mm -hmm. alone. Mm -hmm. The officer that shot Mike Ferguson said, Mike Brown. Mike Brown said, if I'd have just had a few more seconds. 30 more my, seconds. My backup to come on. Right. That was um, Darren so, Wilson. Really? Yeah. Backup. Yeah. yeah. One man was one He man. was by himself. Yeah. Yeah. If right. I had just had backup. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. On, on this so, chief, on this chief. Let me, let me, let me get on. to my oh, point. Yeah, you, the problem you the police. is yeah. <laughs> you need to understand you need to reorganize it. Okay. And if you're not going to reorganize it, then 
you just another figure here. Okay. Well, let me throw this out to you, too. We'll yeah. comment on it. Now, she made mention in the article also, too, that she was going to reside in the Portland area. Mm hmm and it's been known that uh, what it was 70 75 percent of the officers are outside of the city limit and when he started talking about community policing boy if you just map those guys all yeah. over the place give them the car to drive home what do you think mr cop what do you think well, sir? the city the city limits is, is a big area now i mean you can live at 160th and powell and yes. still be in the city right yeah. you know and you can live <clears throat> you can still live in west slope and be in the city of portland because i live in the city of portland technically so does that make any difference? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Letting policemen drive cars home? No. Right. I, know, think you know, I think it's good for her. I think it's a good thing because it shows solidarity with the citizens of Portland. It shows yeah. that she's not an elitist. It shows that she wants to live with Portland citizens and be yeah. one I mean, of them. She has a wide opportunity. Yeah. You can live in West Portland, East Portland, yeah. the West Hills, and still live in the city. Yeah, but what about the other cops? I'm just saying, cause remember, in, in the military, like we were, we got ha hazardous duty pay. <laughs> We got hazardous yeah. duty pay when you went in certain areas. Yeah. I mean, what, yeah, and the, well. the, the reason being that they needed they needed uh, uh, they needed law enforcement. Well, they experimented with that in the early '90s, right. making yeah. housing loans for police officers moving into North and Northeast right. Portland. Right. I think it's good for police officers to live in the neighborhoods that they're policing. I know that there's mm. resistance to that, and there's reasons why not. But I think it's good to have police who are members of the community. Mm -hmm. And I think what the police bureau needs right now more than anything is leadership. Danielle Outlaw looks like a leader, and I think that's a good thing. I mm -hmm. hope that she's able to do what needs to happen here. The thing that concerns me about it all is we don't know the process of picking her. Mm -hmm. And this seems to be the whole issue with Mayor Wheeler, is he doesn't want to let us know what's going right. on. He wants yeah. to, to tell us when he's made his decisions. Right. He doesn't let He's the community be involved. Yeah. In fact, they had the community meeting with only with invited guests. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, it's and it smacks of elitism. It does. It is elitism. And I was very resentful that the the public didn't even know who who was on the roster, who 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 he mm -hmm. was considering. Why is that? Why all the secrecy? Mm -hmm. We have a right to know. You mm -hmm. know. Well, and what what the result is is good optics. Everything looks good. Right. We have a black woman police chief now. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. It looks good. But, but is that all? That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And That's right. with Mayor Wheeler, I'm afraid that might be all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I was, it was interesting was when he when the when she was interviewed, her first interview was at the police headquarters. Mm -hmm. And in that interview, the press, only designated press were, were given the opportunity sure. to ask her questions. Right. Sure. And there were other press folks. So I was waiting for the scanner newspaper to be mm -hmm. up there, mm -hmm. or the observer, or right. the right. Hispanic, or the Asian reporter. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I mean? But it was only the major one. Uh, uh, Portland. It looked like to me they were pretty well fixed questions. Of and course. at one point in time, there was a comment when she, someone made and she made, she looked at a smartphone. As if to say she was following the script, so to speak. <laughs> and and the reason why I'm bringing that point up is that remember now, uh, the police department did not support endorse Wheeler when he was running for mayor. Right. And he made the point then that I'm going outside of the deal. And then he's got the situation with the protesters and this, that, and the other. And then, you know they've been uh, Teresa Rayford was there, but on all due respect, Teresa was never up front. She was never allowed to speak. But a lot of the folks that were there were really supportive. They would all say, basically, she was there, but she wasn't there. Right. right. You got my point? And, then, and so, yeah, she says, well, well, gee. So now he's selecting a black woman as chief. She, they was countering that deal. And this is a mind. This is just a, something that, that came to mind, mm -hmm. if you will. And I was, I was worried about that. So, so, and then he's been meeting with certain blacks in the black community. And I'll be right up front with one of the major churches here. Mm -hmm. He's been meeting with the pastor there. And I'm sure he had a major, you know, he had a, he had his hands on, in terms of who I want. To, can you give me some black folks to get on the committee? Mm -hmm. In all due respect, I'm not saying not for me with respect, them, but I, I've interviewed this person before. Why didn't you come on the show? Yeah, we've we've invited Wheeler on many occasions, if you will. He could have come on the show. He's mayor. Right well, now. because I think in a lot of ways Ted Wheeler is an elitist. I'm just going to be honest mm -hmm. and say that. I've emailed him three times. He's never responded. Whenever I emailed. Um, Amanda Fritz, she responded. I've emailed Dan Saltzman. He responded or his staff responded. Mm -hmm. Ted Wheeler's never responded mm -hmm. um, because he's an elitist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but well, like and said, it's, it's back, back, it's hidden deals. Okay, yeah. yes. He's, yeah. he's making deals right. and we don't know what goes into those mm -hmm. deals. Right. That's the way we've done things in Portland and it's never been good for Portland mm -hmm. citizens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the other thing I wanted to mention a few, like five minutes ago was um, we were talking about police officers living in the city of Portland. Right. Um, I've talked to a couple people in the last year um, 
there's, you know, the, the police culture is very um, hard to penetrate. It's, you know, it's um, the thin blue line. Pe police officers can be very secretive and very suspicious. Um, but I've heard stories about cops being very, very careful about what restaurants they go to. Because if people know they're a police officer, there have been instances in Portland in the last couple of years where there have been a couple of cops that were that ate in a restaurant they don't normally eat in and they got yeah, food poisoning. Yeah. And so because and you wonder, how does this happen? You know, um, because there are people that work in the food industry that are part of the vocal minority. Yeah, there are people yeah. that absolutely hate cops. And so I think part of the reason a lot of Portland police officers don't want to live in Portland and want to live outside of the city limits is just because they feel safer. So it, it, should they live in Portland? Probably. But um, it's kind of understandable why a lot of them choose not to, um, especially in today's climate when you have so much, so many acts of just egregious racism and white police officers killing people of color nationwide that are just so outrageous mm -hmm. that it, it really kind of propels the public to it compels the public to to just really hate law enforcement no matter what and that's sad to I, see i think that i think no, that no. They, the policemen need their anonymous time they should be able to go home hang up their uniform put the police car away and be, be joe citizen okay not living in the neighborhood where you okay. can be a cop you know they need that uh, they need that, that away time, mm -hmm. that free mm -hmm. time. I'm I'm just Joe Bull and Fred Myers. Mm -hmm. you know? So I don't want to live in the district where I work. I don't want to park my police car in front of the house. Mm -hmm. I want because my anonymity. W when you think of the um, in the last five years, when you think of the the number of of ambushes that have happened, mostly out of state, but. You know, it was just a few years ago that those four cops were blown away in Washington. Yeah, I remember that. Um, and that was just that was just awful. Um, cops are afraid. They're afraid to become known in Portland. You know, and I can I can understand why a lot of them wouldn't want to live in the Portland area. No, and you know, getting back to you aspect, there, what about you when you were a cop during those days? I can remember the respect. You know, I mean, and they would have coffee and yeah. the various restaurants, and people would love the idea of just yeah. just going and would say, "Hey, thanks for serving," and mm -hmm. and they knew their neighbors. I mean, community mm -hmm. policing, knowing their neighbors and talking and whatever. You talked about the soft uniform aspect of it. I think that's a good mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. We used to have a yeah. uh, a rose on the police cars, if you will. Yeah. City of roses, if right. you will. We don't have that. Looking mm -hmm. like ninjas and whatever. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's a that's a fact. It is. See, so we need to talk about solutions. And I hope that they're listening to what we're talking about and have those discussions. Well, was have it, those discussions. What do you think? It was a different time, you know, and we ate uh, on duty at just about any place we wanted right? to okay. without any fear. Okay. Uh, we had our regular spots, of course, but there was not that fear of assassination. Uh, it was a different time, too. I was the only gun in the neighborhood. Citizens weren't allowed to carry guns. And uh, I was pretty strict about that. Most policemen were. So it was a completely different time. But then on the other hand, I didn't live in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I moved to Gresham. Okay. And I moved to Gresham because I realized how unsafe it was in Portland. Mm -hmm. So. And now it's even worse. And now, and now it's even worse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not even safe in Gresham. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. I don't know if it's it's worse now. I mean, northeast and the north end is actually safer it's, now than it was 50 years ago. Yeah, it's because it's been gentrified to a different city. Yeah. 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 The property is being bought up. Now they got high rises, and they're thinking mm -hmm. they're going to get uh, maybe high tech <laughs> folks coming in, paying for maybe about maybe a thousand, two thousand dollars a month. I yeah. would. For one I would. Bedroom. Mm -hmm. I would guess that the crime rate's not any lower. It's just different crimes that are being committed. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there's no, there's no Albina ghetto like there was. It's been gentrified to a much safer, you know, a much more pleasant place to be nowadays. I mean, you can ride your bicycle down Union a or down Union, down Williams <laughs> Avenue. You're you know, right. And not be afraid anymore. You're right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. and like I said, it's an issue, and then, but the, but in all due respect, the the mayor made that decision. He did. And at the end of the yeah. day, it's still going to be on his plate. That's he right. needs to understand that this is not just quote throw some black woman in the front of me mm -hmm. or have her come over here and talk right. talk about the issues of the city. I don't want to see her. I want to see him sitting at the chair, yeah. telling us exactly we could, because it's us, the people who are saying, hey, I'm, I'm interested in safeness, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You develop the plan. Mm -hmm come back and get it to sign off on this deal and you give it to your chief and hey police train the train accordingly and just implement but no it, 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 so I, I agree with you I mean sure I want to talk about her 
but I want to talk to the mayor. <laughs> exactly. Uh, he is the mayor of the city of Portland. Yeah. He, at the end of the day, it's his his selection. That's what he did. Mm -hmm. And then whether it be, I don't know who's going to get for deputy chiefs. That's <laughs> that's not my problem. Right. He can even pick those two if he wants to. He has well, that that right. Right. Fair. Yeah, he does. Uh, he has a, he has the power of assignment. He can assign yeah, he can sign anything he wants to. Uh, the thing that she can do and should do is reorganize the police so we put more policemen on the street. Okay. That she can do. Okay. Simply administratively, she can do that. What she can't do is implement community policing, mm -hmm. because community policing would mean hiring another thousand cops. Mm. If you want if you want to see cops in the neighborhood on the foot. You gotta hire another thousand of them. Mm. That's what community policing is. So we talk, 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 but it will never happen. Mm -hmm. If you're not willing to hire another thousand policemen, so you see them walking in the neighborhoods, mm -hmm. and you walk in the streets, hi, Officer Joe, that's community policing. That will never happen in this city without more policemen. Mm. A lot more policemen. Mm. But you can take the policemen you have and better organize them so that there's more <laughs> cops on the street. What about street watch? Remember they had they had that whole deal with citizens were well, that's actually never, walking that's, the deal. Well, that's that's not, that's why, not, why didn't that work? That's not a good idea because they're not trained people. Right. Yeah. You know, they're um, they're, they're civilians. But everybody's got guns now, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> don't we all have guns now? No. 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 We don't all have guns. We don't have guns. <laughs> no. Well, let me pull them out a second. <laughs> Hold on. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But no, uh, not trying to be facetious about it. But hopefully, we're talking about solutions. So, would, would, would you have any? any I'm problem? offering solutions. There you go. But <laughs> I would, hope they're listening. Would you have a problem? This is if, how we need to fix this would you, mess. Would you have a problem if Wheeler called you up and talked to you a little bit? No, not at oh, all. Oh, he'll never do that. He'd never do that. Wait, wait a minute. Oh, yes, because he he's would. an elitist. No, no, he would. He would do that for Don. Don. So, Don's got yeah. the experience. This what about? What fixed. about if the new chief called you up? Would you? Would you chat of course, with her? Of course. Would you? Would the you new chief needs to read Don's book. Yeah. Behind okay. the Badge in River City, a Portland Police Memoir. Yeah. She needs to understand the history of the Portland Police Bureau, and mm -hmm. that's a good book. It's not a pat on the back. It's not It's not a rosy tale of success only. It's a really hard-boiled book about the reality of the Portland Police Bureau and the corruption that existed in the 60s and, and then the 70s. And then that's J.D. That's why I got you guys right here. He's written several books yes. about specifically Portland. Yes. yes. And you know that That's history true. kind of relates, if you will, to where we are right now. I think day. it does. I think w it does. Would you have a problem if she give you a call? Or? No, I'd be happy to I'm, talk how with about her. The, how about the mayor? Uh, I'd be happy to talk with him, too. Okay. Does he have, does they, do they have copies of your book? I don't know. Okay. They man. should. Everyone, everyone should have they, copies they, they, of my book. I agree yes. with it. Well, <laughs> Voter Digest does, because we're going to be on talking about this deal. And this is not a, you know, in all due respect, it's a very important piece. So in terms of, this is not a sales kind of a deal. It's just, it's just information and mm. education. Yeah. That's what I've gotten out of the kind of books that they've written. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's not fictitious and whatever. These these are factual accounts mm -hmm. aspect of it, sort of the names aspect of it. But it, it, that's where we were. It's yeah. not, we're not trying to convict anybody from that either. Right. But that's the history of this town as it relates to law enforcement. Right. Yeah. We to, well, we need to take these history books that JD's written and mm -hmm. spread them out so you recognize the history yes. of the corruption yes. in the yes. city. That has, of course, of has to evolve the police yes, department yes, too. Yes, but the yeah. whole city's been yes, yes, yeah. yes absolutely. You know, it's never from, been just the police bureau. No, 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 no. It's no, the no. whole city the hall is a criminal enterprise. But, but know, this is a, but this is a major concern now. Yeah. Yes. and that's why we're trying to fo we're focusing yeah. on that piece. We can do the other thing. Yeah. Like for instance, we may we may hit a little bit of that uh, the next week aspect of it. Look, we're going to take a short break aspect of it, and uh, I understand you've got a guest that's going to be coming on. You want him to. See that guy named Fred Stewart? You recognize that name? I remember him now. Okay, we're going to take a short break, and guess is going to, we're going to have a hmm. Don's guest going to come in and share some thoughts with us. And okay, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Okay. So it's Fred. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
nicely. Welcome back, folks, to Oregon Voters Digest. Again, I'm Bruce Broussard, your host, and that's Teresa, Teresa DePay, another host aspect of it. And we got another pace of J.D. Chandler, who's another host, and then we got another one that's going to be coming on, and that's Don, <laughs> Don DePay. And <laughs> Don, I mean, it, it's, we're just all over the place, okay? This Fred Stewart. Don. Fred no. Stewart. <laughs> was that? No, I'm not Don. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Don looks better. I thought they all look alike to me. I mean, they, they, Don they, looks better. These, these high note folks, you know, they're involved and whatever, they're all in the same camp. We are in the same camp. We're doers. I mean, we're out there making things happen uh, to bury, if you will, our way of life. And that's what it's all about. You got me? Yeah. I enjoy it. You know, that's why I enjoy the show and aspect of it. And and uh, we have the freedom to just share those thoughts. And, again, I want to welcome I welcome, the, I welcome these guys before, Fred, uh, as far as uh, coming on the show and thanking you for being on the, the, the Oregon Voters Digest. You've been on there for years. You you voice your opinions. As far as I'm concerned, they're right on. I mean, that's what it's all about. But we're all creatures of our exposure, bottom line, okay? Mm -hmm. And I've always maintained that a negative is far more positive than a positive at times. <laughs> and it, because you can ask questions when you get a negative, but you can't do it if it's just a positive, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But anyway, I want to thank you, okay? Coming on, okay? Oh, thank you. Thanks so, for the invite. So, Anytime. So tell you what we're going to do this time around. We're going we're gonna to kind of regurgitate a little bit about police and then maybe even share a little bit about uh, uh, the uh, the newly elected uh, superintendent of public schools here in Portland. It's kind of a neat piece because that has something to do yeah. with educating those kids and educating yeah. through that, that system. And it's another big mess. Big, big mess aspect mm -hmm. of it. So look, why don't we start off with you and, and then maybe talk, we're talking we talk about police aspect of it. If mm -hmm. you can kind of talk a little bit about the selection process and what do you think? What do you think? Just whatever you, well, whatever's on your mind. Well, the only thing I know about the selection process, I mean, ultimately, no matter what any committee the mayor puts together, it's the mayor's decision, ultimately. Right. That's okay, right. so it doesn't matter what the committee says, but um, this last committee that Ted Wheeler put together, you know, I said it before, um, it's one of the best committees that's been put together. There's a few people on there that I wouldn't have put on there. They're just do-nothings. Mm -hmm. And they got a long history of do-nothing. But it's one of the better ones. It's better than, I think, any committee that um, any mayor before would have put together. I mean, I, I'll give him a super A plus for effort. Well, you mentioned uh, you mentioned uh, Brown, mm -hmm. Richard Brown. Yeah, Richard he, Brown was on there. Former Richard, Navy. Richard Brown's a straight shooter. Yep. You know, he really is. And he's yep. and and Richard, Richard Richard does what he does because he cares about the community. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care whether you agree with him or not. I mean, he's not an well, arrogant man he's or like nothing. You. Well, yeah, but I mean, he's he's but more he, wise. Yeah, he's like, yeah. <laughs> He's more wise. But no, but I mean, he's a straight when say, shooter. When I say like you, young and, I, and I know any any he any, any, his opinion. Which anything is good. any committee like that that they got Richard Brown on, um, I know is going the right direction. But um, you know, this woman, like you know, I, I would talk more with people like these two who've got history of studying um, the Portland Police. But from what I know, um, when you get uh, outside the culture of Portland, especially outside of the Portland Police. It usually ends badly, and each time yeah. it's happened, it got worse. Mm -hmm. You know, with Kroger just just being a complete, yeah. just bad. That was it, bad. He, he was bad like the first week. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like from Jump Street, Kroger was hitting hard. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, um, I'm personally going to give her a shot. You know, because I, I I want the best. But I do feel that uh, the history of Portland police is important in this, and understanding the challenges mm -hmm. that she's facing and what's in front of her, because they are real. You know, and this is going over what? When was the last time that? When was the first time a, 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 a police chief from outside our culture was hired? Well, it's it isn't that common a thing. Yeah. Uh, the one that I always think of, and it's because I did research, it was Charles Prey. Yeah. Who uh, uh, Dorothy Lee brought in? He was from the Oregon State Police. In the fifties. Uh, late forties. Okay. Late forties. Uh, Nineteen forty-eight. Yeah. And um, he was pretty much clueless. He did not know what was going on in the Portland mm -hmm. Police Bureau, and he never was really able to find out. So, is that uh, the one that they said you retired? Basically, the cops came to him and said, "Yes, you retired. <laughs> Go and, do, grow your roses like, in Eastport." Yeah, or <laughs> we've got this this plot <laughs> that you need to buy up in Rose in, a, in River in Riverview. I never heard that story, or something but, like that. Yeah, but that could it, very it may well not be. have been Riverview, but basically, <laughs> really? he, he was informed. He was retired. That is the way they did things <laughs> yeah. in those days. In those true. days, yeah. Well, he's famous for saying, "Everyone knows where the gambling in Portland is, except me." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And and it's true. The vice squad would not talk to him. Uh, and that's that's the kind of thing you face when you have a, a chief who's from the outside. Is right. Exactly. She's not going to be in with the guys. She's They're not, not going to tell her what's going exactly. on. She's right. going to have to find out for herself. And if yeah. she doesn't find out, she'll never know. And what that's, about that's, our deputy chiefs? What, 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 what's that all about? They're, in, in a case like that, they're usually the ones who hold the power. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah. And we, she's we going to need a lot of support from the mayor. We were yes. talking about this on the last show, and I mentioned that mm -hmm. very thing. I said she's not going to be in on the rivalries, the conflicts, the alliances of mm -hmm. the guys in the upper division, the brass. Now, theoretically, that can be a good thing, though, mm -hmm. uh, because she's not involved in it. Um, she's she's gone through some really terrible scandals down in Oakland. Right. Mm. Uh, there's yeah. been a lot going on yeah. there, and she's always been on the outside of that, which mm -hmm. I think is interesting. I yeah. think that she's in a good position. Mm -hmm. Also, I think Oakland is a pretty good match for Portland. It's uh, our cities are about the same size. Mm -hmm. They have very similar histories. In a lot of ways, Portland and Oakland are sister cities. So mm. I think there's some. I I have hope for her. Um, yeah. Me too. Portland Police Bureau needs yeah. a leader. She looks like a leader. But I think the two of these should write an article and give <laughs> some history to Portland so we understand what this woman is facing. Like you heard some great information here about Chief Prey. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many of Portlanders are outside the law enforcement yeah. knows about Chief Prey? Right. You know, and I know three or four stories about him. I mean, nothing bad like yeah. he was a bad guy, but it was kind of like what, yeah. what C J.D. Yeah, just yeah, said. Yeah. He was always on the outside. Yeah. And he was never able to do what Dorothy McCullough Lee, Mayor Dorothy McCullough Lee, wanted him to do, because he just couldn't, he couldn't get there. Yeah. That's actually a really good point because I talked to a cop about two years ago, at Central Precinct, mm -hmm. and um, I called to ask for some information or something. But we ended up talking about the article I wrote about the 1941 murder suicide mm -hmm. at East Precinct mm -hmm. of. Um, Blaine Chase killed Philip Johnson mm. and he, he had no idea he said I never heard about that mm -hmm. a lot of cops working for Portland Police Bureau don't have a real good grasp of the history of it mm -hmm. I'd say none of them do yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah especially yeah. in a new crowd yeah, yeah. and yeah. especially going back more than 40 years exactly or so. but is that yeah. good I mean sometimes I don't think I, it's good I think they should know yeah. they should yeah. really it should be up to every Portland police officer to really investigate the history of the bureau mm. you know mm -hmm. well I think another uh, historical example that could be instructive here is uh, Burton Lawson who was the police chief during the 1934 waterfront strike okay. mm. he was an outsider he was a friend of the mayor the mayor um, uh, Carson uh, he had been his commander in World War I. Uh, so they had that relationship, and he brought him in thinking a military guy could come and really give some discipline to the police force, which was in as bad a shape as our force right now. Mm -hmm. And But it turned into a horrible political thing. He ended up shooting uh, demonstrators. Really? Uh, yeah, and I think that that's kind of applicable because we're, we could be in a situation mm -hmm of that happening in Portland now. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you make a good point. As I'm listening to you, I'm just mm -hmm. really taking it in somewhat. And because of what you said, what came, what came out, what, what was come up in my mindset was that he is also now the chief of police. I'm just throwing that on the table. Mm -hmm. Meaning that it's he, the mayor. He, the yes, mayor. he's taking on all the responsibility. Yeah. She's just she will do as he say. He says. Well, he's a police commissioner. Yeah. No, no. So he, understand. But my yeah. mindset is that he's the chief of police. Yeah. Because when he went out and picked the outsider, so he picked the outsider, very secretive and all this, this, that, and the other. It wasn't someone that you knew that could compete, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He just said, hey, there it is. I'm going to be the chief. I'm going to get back to City Hall, and I'm going to fight the protesters, at the blah, blah, blah. blah. Mm -hmm. I will determine just exactly how they, that, that's being handled, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just throwing that out. Any, any thoughts? Well, I, I, the only thought I could get is go back to what I said before earlier. I mean... I think Ted should have called Teresa and, and JD, and and t and had coffee with him, you know, and learned some of these stories. I'm a nobody well, in this well, town. No, but I'm just saying. No, you guys got the research. No, but, but the he, thing is, but he did. No, I don't think he. T yes, I don't he think did. he sat down with right these guys. Right here on the Oregon, right here on the Oregon voters' digest, all he had to do was turn on the no, switch. No, 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 no. Because there's a lot of. If you sit down with these two people, no, he's heard you and Don, and get to talking about the Portland know, police, yeah. you're gonna hear some stuff that people just haven't heard. And it all goes to the culture that even is relevant to today. Yeah. Because we got the same, basically the same structure that we had way back in the 1930s. So well, that's and, uh, actually a good point. And you know what that harkens back to? What Don said in his book and mm -hmm. what he said repeatedly, which is police work hasn't changed. It's mm -hmm. the same today as it was 60 years ago. The only thing that's changed is technology. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's and what the what, expectations of the community. Well, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. That's true, but what what frustrates me um, is there are a lot of people that think Don is just an old man. He and that man. what and that That's why he's so wise. <laughs> and that what he <laughs> thinks is it's, you know, dated and it's not valid baloney. baloney. You know, he was 
a street cop for six years. He was a detective for 11 years. He was an instructor in the Portland Police Bureau. He taught search and seizure. He, he coached detectives. He knows a lot, and I wish that more people had a little hey, bit more some respect. Some of those same idiots read Chesty Puller's book, mm -hmm. right? I read Chesty Puller's book. Chesty Puller hasn't been a Marine since the 1950s. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? But when I was in the <laughs> was reading Chesty Puller's book, don't you think I learned a lot about being a Marine? Mm -hmm. No, some of those people are just <laughs> jealous that they don't know as much as him. Well, and, and I think also... Um, <laughs> just ignore them. Th there are several people that have written books, I probably less than five, about working, on the, working with the Portland Police Bureau. Um, there was a book that uh, was written by... Um, what's his name? Um... She was the chief of police, and Don Don mentions him in the book. Um, oh, out of the blue, or something. You can't even find Still. it. Still, Ron Still. Ron Still. Ron Still wrote Out of the Blue, and it's basically just a pat on a, a pat on his back. It's 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 not accurate. It's just uh, it's just. Still couldn't tell the truth about what he did as police. Exactly, chief. and there are a couple other guys that That's have written. True. There's Ron's, one other guy that. Ron Still's a good example. One other guy wrote a book about being with the Portland Police Bureau and what a fun job it was, and and basically um, there have been a couple other guys that have written books. They're not accurate. They're not honest. Don's mm -hmm. book is an honest portrayal of what it was like, the good, the bad, and you the know, ugly. You know, years ago, when I first met Ron Still, he was running against Bud Clark for mayor. Right. And I was a member of Qantas. <laughs> and I'm at the Qantas Club mm -hmm. out in East Multnomah County. And um, what do you call it? I'm only like 23. I'm in a suit. Mm -hmm. And I'm at this meeting. And Ron Still sent me there bragging about when he first got in the police department. <laughs> How many black people he used to beat up? Oh, he was terrible. And it was, and yeah, I remember you got a young yeah, black guy. Right. Now, sure. I'm the youngest right. guy in the room, <laughs> right. so I'm like really a nobody. <laughs> right. But Ron is sitting this at right. this table with guys and go, yeah. When I came on, they always called me because you know I was I was a boxer right. when I was right. in high school or right. college. I forgot which one, mm -hmm. and I really knew how to punch these guys because mm -hmm. you know these guys mm -hmm. got thick heads. Right. And I'm sitting there with my ex-wife, <laughs> and it's like, man, it's like either he's talking to me. I mean, is he trying uh -huh, to? Right. right. Is he like talking like this because yeah. I'm here and he's right. like, "What are you going to do?" That's incredibly insensitive, and I'm not surprised yeah. about that at all. Well, I'm thinking, you know, you're too old for me to beat up. Right. But you can't knock me right. out. Don <laughs> saw him. Right. Don saw him, and we almost put it in the book, and we almost named him in the book too. Yeah. But I really, I convinced Don not to name two men that are still alive. He's one of them in the book. Um, just because I wanted to avoid any litigation, but there's a story Don tells of Don't when be he, afraid of when he was, they're gonna lose. <laughs> when it's he true. was when he was a cop and he was still in his probationary period of 18 months. Ron Still was a patrolman with about five years on, and they were going up in the elevator in the old um, headquarters building, and they had a a white kid who was probably in his early 20s who was cuffed, mm -hmm. and Ron Still stopped the elevator in between floors and pounded him, a cuffed prisoner oh, his yeah. hands behind his back oh, yeah. and don was you know he didn't do anything because he was on his probationary he period so he didn't at, tell at, that story but he talked about he beating up guys pulling over sure, sure. like in the back well, he did and alleys and stuff like that and he was known yeah. as a brute yeah and yeah. so beating the hell out of the guys so they're yeah. getting they get up to the top floor where the, the fifth floor or so where the jail is and they had to help this guy out of the elevator because hmm. You know, I mean, he just pounded him, his ribs and his kidneys, you know, kidney shots. I mean, yeah. that's not what a good police officer no. does. You don't beat a, a handcuffed prisoner to the point where they're almost unconscious, mm -hmm. you know, and that's mm -hmm. what he did. So, yeah. Well, if you look, like I said, when I was running last year, when you look at the history of the Portland police in the early, early years, it was the guy, those are the guys they wanted. They yes. wanted right. brutes. Yes. Right, right, right. You know, right. they wanted right. brutes aggressive. because, you know, aggressive, yeah. because yeah. they were dealing mm -hmm. with, Brutes on right. the street. I mean, some of these old reports I read when I was on the on the uh, on Payac, mm -hmm. I'd go into the archives and pull out things for like 1910. And some of these these fights, we had, we lost yeah. a police officer once in this huge brawl where he ended up getting shot. But it was like a melee. Yeah. It was like five right. cops and right. 30 guys, yeah. right. and they wanted guys right. that would walk into rooms right. like that and beat right. up all comers. And right. I used to right. tell people. Last year, do we really do? Do we need that mentality right. in right. law enforcement today? It may have been perfect a hundred years ago. Maybe it even wasn't perfect then. <laughs> but, but I was just saying. But to, I think a lot of times we're still somehow hiring cops yeah. that have that mentality. You know, yeah. there's five guys over there. There's only me. I got a gun and a shotgun. Yep. The fight is equal. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know. 
And that's how they look at it. Well, I think it's important to get cops. Cops have to be able to fight. They have to be aggressive. They, they have do. to be strong. But the question is, when do they cross that line and when do they start abusing power? Mm. And I think that mm. still was well known as an abuser of power. If she, if the new police chief asked you, I'm going to ask each one of you this question. When, is, when does a cop cross the line in that area as far as being a good cop, expect, you know, doing their job, and of crossing the line to now been abusive? In, in your research of law enforcement, what, what would your answer be to that? Um, well, I, I would probably answer that um, based on what Dawn has told me. Mm -hmm. When they know they can lie and get away with it. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. You? Well, I think it comes down to the law. Mm -hmm. when, when a cop is a law enforcement officer, mm -hmm. that's their purpose, there's nothing else that they're there for, if they're breaking the law, that's completely against what they're doing. Yeah. So it's when a cop breaks the law that they're crossing that line. Wow. Maybe you see how similar those two answers yeah. are? Yeah. yeah. Really, yeah. it is. It's real similar. What yeah. do you yeah. think, Fred? What would you propose? I would agree with them. I mean, that's pretty much what I'm saying, what I'm thinking, what they brought it. But I also think we train cops to go into a situation to, that escalates it, their initial into a situation. I mean, I don't know how to get there yet, but where I know we're at right now is the relationship is with a cop. He's going to talk to you. He or she's going to talk to you until they feel they need to shoot you. Yeah. You, well, you understand? The thing are tactics. And yeah. the thing is, Don and I have talked about this. Don used the chokehold hundreds of times. Nobody died. Don's has said he could choke someone out, roll them over, and in 90 seconds they would be cuffed. Was I have it? watched videos on YouTube of cops in Oregon, cops out of state. Mm -hmm. There's two or three cops, and they spend eight, ten minutes struggling and fighting with some guy and and getting hurt yeah. because no, they because can't of the use Stevenson murder. Right. right. The cop exactly. that cop killed that guy. You see, I, yeah. yeah. I'm a marine. Mm -hmm. I, know. I know how to do that. Ask anybody who's gone through any advanced infantry training well, or whatever. I, what what I I'm getting to, to is this. he no, know, Stevenson was a US Marine. I know. Yes. He killed okay. a US Marine. I know. I, yeah. I know that, but I also know mm -hmm. because I spoke to a retired detective mm -hmm. who was a friend of mine that he was a, a recreational cocaine user and the medical examiner said he mm. had a weakened aorta. So that's not saying that he deserved what happened to him. He didn't, but I think that was part of it. You know, the guy rode bike all the time. I mean, I knew his, his wife. I met his wife. I know mm -hmm. quite a few people in his family. I don't know if, I mean, maybe he did have cocaine. Maybe he had a weakened aorta. But that cop went off on him. He did. Yeah. Because he, did. he was a black guy that was upset that he was being accused of doing something yeah. he hadn't done. Mm -hmm. Because You understand? So this yeah. white cop didn't like this uppity black Negro and put him in a chokehold and was very aggressive. Do you remember which cop it was? Well, and... Besides but, but, that, but wait. Do you remember which cop it was? No, I can't remember his name right now. Okay. Barber, right? Barber, Barber, Barber. Barber. Yeah. Barber. I've looked at Barber's personnel file, and mm -hmm. I can tell you from having researched the personnel files at the archive, mm -hmm. Barber had the most letters from citizens and the most commendations of any cop's file I looked in. Well, okay. so there's he made another... a, he made a big mistake, but he was a really, really good cop. And there's can... another aspect of that Stevenson death yeah. that gets mm -hmm. overlooked, and that's, oh, that's the right. fact that. They put him in the sleeper hold, right. they cuffed him, and then they put him in a stress position where right. he could not breathe. That's they put true. him on top of That's those true. bottles, he would right? Not have yes, That's he true. would not have died if he wasn't put in that what, position. And what, it, what did true. they put him on? It was a, it was of, a, a, a pallet. pallet of bottles. Right, yeah. okay. And they, he, with his hands right. handcuffed behind him, right. his chest on the bottles, he couldn't expand his chest. Right. But Barber, as good as he, and I know, I got a lot of cop friends who feel he was a good cop. I said, bottom line, he goes into this situation, he goes... The perpetrators were all white. He goes after the only he goes black, after guy, the black guy. Yes, and, and the yeah. black guy was the security was guard. the security <laughs> guard, and the black guy was was the one that stopped everything. Stop yes. you know yeah. what I mean. I yeah. said, and they never acknowledged that. Yeah, that this guy walks into the room and just happens to ignore all the bad white people and goes after the black guy and kills yeah. him, and then gets upset that the black guy is offended. Yeah. You know, I tell my white friends, I said, if I did that to you, if I mistreated you. Do you have the right to be disappointed? <laughs> you know exactly. what I'm talking about? Right. Mm. It, it, you know, do you have the right to say, Fred, you're wrong. What you did to me is wrong. Yeah. And and most of my white friends would say, yeah. yeah. But Barber that day didn't feel a black guy had the right, right. to do that. Mm -hmm. And those black guys deal with that a lot. A lot of white guys get mad at us simply because we get mad at them. You know, you've seen it with some of these police exactly. departments. Yes. Some of these police department yeah. uh, shootings you've seen. The, bl the white guy was okay until the black guy got mad, and then all of right. a sudden he's a threat. Exactly. You know, and really what it is is a lot of white guys are raised 
that a black guy should never challenge them. Yes. Uh, you, know, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. And, and if they do, it just gets incensed. Now, I'm a big old bull. When a white guy gets like that with me, it's really a bad day for both of us. You know what I'm talking about? Because that pisses me off. I know that. Yeah, white guys that have that. You know what I'm talking about? Don't get that way with me. But what I'm saying, I'm not saying that's also no, no, no necessarily good, but it is an aspect of racism yeah, that is. black yeah. people yeah. have to deal with. Yeah. And I think that's what happened that night with that young man. Yeah. And, and, and Portland cops in Northeast Portland back then, they're used to submissive black men. Yes. And when I say used to submissive black men is, you better follow a police officer. You can shot. You know, or you're going to get shot. And yes. if you go yeah. back, maybe they didn't even care if they shot you, maybe up until 1980. Yeah. In other words, all the black guys they shot before, yep. there's no such thing as a bad black shooting. Exactly. Yeah. You know? It never has been. No, it never has been. Nope. That's what I'm trying to say. Before <laughs> 19, they, they, yeah. it was like a one-day investigation. Yep. Oh, he's black? What did, he, what did he do? Oh, he he, he he threatened me. Even if you showed up to the wrong house and shot the guy who lived in the wrong place. Exactly. <laughs> he was a threat. Wow. Uh, he didn't know me and I didn't know yeah. him. And yeah. He, yeah. he's a threat because, you know, he's black. Yeah. No, Portland police, you know, my grandfather, the stories he used to tell me about uh, the, the cops here in Portland and how they ran, you know, Portland, at least mm -hmm. around him. Right. I mean, it was an absolute power thing between yeah. White people and black yeah. people. You got to remember, that's how the city of Portland enforced redlining. Yep. Mm -hmm. If you were a black person and you were living in the wrong spot, the cops got to show up. Yep. You know what I'm talking about? And uh, if the if the city felt that you were being a little bit too uppity, you know what I'm talking about? You mm -hmm. got arrested. That's right. You know? Yeah. And, okay. and, and whatever charge the cops said, that's what the DA ran with. That's exactly. Right. All right. Don has agreed. Has we got about that. we got mm -hmm. about eight more minutes aspect of it. Mm -hmm. I'd like to spend a little time on Virginia for a minute. Okay. Let's okay. spend a little time on Virginia. Who wants to start off? Who wants to lead off on this deal? Go ahead, Fred. Go on, Fred. Um, good and bad. The bad, of course, is these damn Nazis and the mm -hmm. and everything. But you know, I tell everybody, I posted on Facebook. What really warms my heart is look at how many white people were standing up to this. Yeah. You know what I mean? That is something I'm glad the world got to see. I think it's important for the rest of the nation to see. Mm -hmm. We had all these white people. I saw 10 times, maybe 20 times more white people down there than black people confronting them. And I got to tell people, it's going to be white people who are really going to have the influence on changing this stuff. I mean, that's what probably even incensed David Duke and his friends even more. Wasn't that the black people were upset. Right. David Duke doesn't care yeah. if a guy like me is upset yeah, right. about what yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. But he sees all these white people right. there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was just like when, uh, what's his name, got sued in 91. Um, what's his name? Uh, Tom Metzger. Do yeah. yeah. you remember yeah. that yeah. press yeah. conference? Yeah. 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 And when the first thing he says in the press conference when he lost is the white people in Portland don't know how to be white. <laughs> he was so, he did not do yeah. that press conference oh directed at me yeah. or other. Right. He was mad right. at right. Portland right. white people right. Right. for right. convicting him right. of mm -hmm. being responsible. Right. Right. Yeah. And then locally, to, to talk in regards to the, 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 because of the who's who and the white, 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 locally, Jamie Partry, we were talking a little yes. bit about Jamie Partry. They're putting a vigil, if you will, today. At 5 o'clock. Down at the city hall. Right for the anyway. for the Virginia, for Virginia. Uh, Heather Hires. For Heather Hires. Yeah. Yeah, he's doing, yes. yeah, they're doing that now. Yeah. Yeah. God bless yeah. Jamie. Yeah. Yeah. Jamie's yeah. always yeah. been that way. Okay. He has. Yeah. Yeah. Always. <laughs> Let us get it. Okay, go on. Yeah, yeah, and I I just want to reiterate, I was four years old when Selma, Alabama happened. Uh, but all of my life I've seen the, the TV video of that, and that's been a very important moment in my life. And I think we're seeing it happen in Charlottesville, Virginia right now. I agree. Exactly the same thing. I agree. Mm -hmm. By the grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Okay. Exactly. Let me get it. We got just a couple more minutes. Hold on. Um, Virginia. Virginia. It's just, it's just uh, more pro it's proof to me of the incredible um, evil influence that Trump has, has on this country. Absolutely. Um, Trump is responsible for this. Um, th these people are coming out of the woodwork because they're losers, they're ignorant, they're uneducated, they don't have anything going for them. So this is what they can jump on. So how are we going to solve the problem? we got to um, hurry up and vote for somebody no, else. No, no, no. But, but, my yeah, point is, but my point is that he's president of the United States right now. Give him some direction. Um, what what we, do you say to him? We need to continue to resist, you know. Resist um, how? Resist uh, by, you know, and, and there's there's things some people can do. Portland Resistance is a good organization. Okay. I, I definitely believe that. They're very important to Portland. I can't do the things that, that, that those kids do because I'm, I, I'm doing other things, mm -hmm. you know, that are more personal. I have a, a, a black family member who is incarcerated that I'm trying to help. I'm trying to save her life. Um, what I'm doing is a little different, a little more personal, but I guess just 
basically just Everybody continue, continue to resist. Yeah. JD, what and do you think? Resistance is the key. We have to resist every step of the way. Being there at Charlottesville is very important. And mm -hmm. the people, the woman that died, um, she's a martyr to yeah. what happened. Um, but Teresa's right. Being out there on the street is not for every single person, but there's something that all of us can do. And we have to tap into our creativity, creativity and our own energy to resist personally. Okay. Yeah. But he, again, he's president of the United States, so what do we say to he's him? He's not my president. No, 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 but, no but he's <laughs> He president, is president he's of president the United, United States. States. <laughs> but I'm just saying, we, my point is that let, let's try to give him something that says, hey, look, it, it is an issue, but give him an out. Well, this yeah. is what you can do, so to speak. Yeah. You know I mean? Well, just like what you just said, you know, he you, could you, he could stop making stupid threats to everybody in the world. Exactly, that would be a exactly. good start. It, the comments he made to Korea, to South Korea, I mean, yeah. come Venezuela. On. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's just he's a bully. You real know? quick, I got one more minute. <laughs> Talk to me, real quick, buddy. About what? About the solution to the president. <laughs> About the solution to the president. Uh, Midterm elections. Like I got to tell everybody in my yeah. Facebook. I'm no, what not you, even worried no, about him. No, what do you say to the president to solving the problem? Would you please resign? Yes. I mean, yes. He, he can't solve resign. it. Trump does not have the skill set or the exactly. inclination. Or the credibility. Or the exactly. credibility yeah. to be part of this. He's no. got seven pending lawsuits for fraud. Yeah. He is a criminal. What we've, what we've got to do is make sure the midterm elections are successful. And when I say successful, not successful for the Republicans. Right. Mm -hmm. we, we, and we got to make right. sure we get good Democrats. Right. we got to stop l allowing flunky Democrats to yes. get in front of us. Mm -hmm. Because these flunkies are the reason why we got Trump. Right. That's absolutely These do right. nothing. And failure people gave notion to why not give Trump a chance. Right. Right. I voted for nice, good Democrats for years, and I'm still in the same muck that I was in before they came around. So why not give this idiot a chance? Yeah. They're just as much to blame as anything else for Trump being there. Yeah. But right. we got to get good people, and we got to defeat these Republicans. Right. And we got to do that in 2018. Yes. And then in 2020, hope to God, we got somebody that's maybe one-tenth mm -hmm. of, of, uh, of Barack Obama right. that can be the next president. <laughs> yeah. right. You know what I mean? One-tenth. But we'd be better off. We'd be better <laughs> off. Well, hey, on that particular note, we, this has been exciting. This is a real good show. That we've got good information out there, and hopefully, folks, you understand what's coming from. And it's coming from you from the Oregon Voters Digest. I'll see you next week, folks. Take Great care. Have a good one. Oh, good, good talking. Good to job. You. Yeah. Good job, everybody. You can good see job. That article. Good job. Huge. Good job. Good job.